What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Redline Outdoors. My name is Adam Sanderson. Today, we'll be going out and checking some hoop nets with a local commercial fisherman. He's also got a YouTube channel. It's called God's Country Hunting and Fishing. We've been trying to get this collab together for eight, nine months now, probably. And we've just now been able to make it happen. We've both been busy with work and family and hunting and fishing and all that good stuff. Y'all make sure that y'all go over to God's Country Hunting and Fishing, subscribe to his channel, and on his latest video, I want you to just go on his comments and say, Redline sent me here. All right, y'all, that's enough of that. We will meet y'all on the water here shortly. I'm excited, and I'm glad to have y'all go with us. Let's go. All right, y'all, here's the meat wagon. And that's the man right there, Bradley Smith and his wife, Danielle. We're about to see if we can load the boat with some fish, with some hoop nets. Y'all ready? Let's go. Let's go. Shake it. All right, then. Oh, yeah. I might end up having to have some help with it. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Hey! Pretty good for the first one. Good one tonight. Let's take this. That is pretty fish. Gas goo. Yep. Here, ate one. There's your, there's your fish cooking video. Yeah. You, you haven't seen our gas for Yeah. One I did wasn't too good. No, I didn't see that. I one. get more comments on that video than any other video. Really? Yep. You're trying to correct me. Do what? Trying to correct me the way I cook it. I've eaten this good before, but I've eaten this bad. Yeah. Way yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. That's all we need. So where do you want these? Just leave one of them there. Which one? These? One's got some bags. This one does. You don't want that goo, do you? I don't. I don't either. Oh, goo! Get out of here, boy! I gnashed it and it looks. Yep. They don't catch good when they go to get one like that. Like you gotta clean that dude out, you know, pretty good. And there's her tag with her name, license number, phone number, all that. 
anyways. I'm gonna make it go good. So yeah, where it's wearing, that's rolling around on the floor. Yep. It'll roll around and cut them lines out. I'll have to retie them in after two or three years. y'all we're putting the first net back in he puts his wife to work <laughs> she's a pretty good boat driver <laughs> pull that net out in the river so to roll back in behind that shelf that's in there Turn will push it back in there where it's supposed to be. Alright y'all, net number two had zero because it's got a hole in the net. Bradley's gonna patch it up real quick. My one main tip on hoop net fishing ain't to keep from getting your net stolen or hide a patch or any of that, it's wear your life jacket. That's the one thing that uh you need to do wear your life jacket racing these hoop nets that water's cold there's a lot of current and if this net goes in that current's gonna push that net down and if you tangled up in it and go in it's gonna push you down with it life jacket or no life jacket so having a life jacket on at least give you a chance for somebody to to grab a hold to you or something and that's that's my one tip of the day right there any of this kind of stuff See all these young guys running around on TikTok and stuff with their mud, mo mud motors, jumping beaver dams and everything else. Ain't none of them got no life jackets on. And uh, some of them won't make it. But these hoop nets, if you get sucked down by one of these, it ain't forgiving. I've, I've had some that we couldn't get up in the boat, have fish in them, and that current will push them fish back down. So any body or any like thing like that hits this water you're going to the bottom where are you like jacket so how long have you been running hoop nets i can remember about four years old being in a boat with daddy <laughs> okay That's so basically your 40, whole life 46 years old so that'd be 40 plus years 40 40 42 years so you know what you're doing i mean i was pulling on the ropes when i was five years old so <laughs> I might not have been able to get that load of fish in here, but I was involved in it. Yeah. Been doing it by myself since I was 16, I guess. Try to get my hand real quick. No, mine's not going. I think mine is. That's in the perfect spot. Is it? That thing there. I think I'll take them off. <clears throat> this one may have some fish in it. You got that lower center of gravity. You're a little better at this than I am. <laughs> I ain't got no real high center of gravity, but you, you got a lower one than I do. Come here to me, boy. Hold it up. Oh, we got some flathead. Two of them. All right. See, so, yeah, that's what that other one would have had, probably. Both these other two had catches in them, but see, them fish there go through that hole that we had to patch. Grab them one hoop at a time and just keep them coming up. Okay.
another goo. <laughs> Take him home, bait. Big crawfish bait. I got better crawfish bait than that. Buffalo. Buffalo heads. You got some? Oh yeah. Perfect right there. Be still. Look like a great white. All good eaters there. Absolutely. A lot of meat. <laughs> we still got three nets How'd your folks get started out here on this river? Well, uh, my granddaddy, he was born in 1910 and he worked for the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. So they had the locks and dam here in Sterlington, Louisiana on the Ouachita River. And he was a lock master down there. And when they shut that lock down and opened Felsenthal, he, they moved him to Felsenthal. So between Monroe and Arkansas, line and, and north into Arkansas, this river all along through here, they fished that. My daddy did growing up, grew up on this river. So what history I've got on the river and learning how to fish and doing what we do is, it all started with my granddaddy on this river. Some of my old net fishermen, they hung around, they heard the stories and, you know, talked to, some of them taught daddy how to fish and stuff like that, these nets and things. A lot of commercial fishermen they interacted with on a daily basis so that's kindly our history you got a lot of history out here a lot of history a lot to learn from this guy right here he is he's good at what he does y'all they like current they like to run in these currents and things so these buffalo in the winter time run this this tree edge they run that ledge right there right against the side of them trees and these are the, the nets that are hanging. They're not on bottom. I mean, oh, these are on this side on bottom, but if, if you wanted to catch buffalo, you can hang these nets in here, you can catch buffalo. But my thing is, is I don't want over one or two hanging, you'll fill this boat up. Yeah. You'll catch more than you want. All right, net number three. Holy smokes. You probably finna get wet. Brother. Oh my goodness. Y'all look at that. Got a dinosaur in there. Look at that. Good gosh. That's a big one. Whoo. Whatever that is, he spit up. That's what he ate. He sure did. That is a Washita River giant right there. He really did spit that up. That fish didn't just die in that net. That sucker, he spit him up. You can see he's half digested. No, I mean, I'm, I know he is. Good grief. Let's see if we can get, hang on, let me get a glove or something. That one's a giant. That's a big one. Is that another catfish? That's another catfish. That he ate. He ate that blue. And spit it out. Spit it up. That's crazy. And it stinks. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. That is a blue that this catfish ate. Oops. I'd probably throw them gloves away. <laughs> oh, they good now. They good now. They broke in, boy. Seasoned up. So I'm just gonna try to turn him and drag him out. Rather than try to pick it and eat it and dump him or anything. Okay. Is that the whole? There it is. I will if I can get him turned around. Yep. When your limb line gets broke, that's what happened. That's what got it. Right there. 
Yeah. Yeah. God. You see that? He got a hole in his mouth. He got a hole in his mouth. He's had a hook in him before. Probably got off my limb line last year. That's probably what it was. That's a big one. He ain't gonna fit in that bucket. You better at that than I am. It's all blue. We can't complain if we don't catch another fish. I know. We got it. Do it. Don't you do it. I knew you was going to do it. Dang it. He, got me. he got me. He got you. The blue cat, dude? Yeah. Blue cat can get you. Them goo is what you don't want to get you. One of them gets you. Really? They hurt. You can pop spines on he get you bad? No. Nah. We got one more? One more. That's number five. Ready? All right, y'all. This is the last net. Last near the day. Last near the day. Even if we don't catch nothing else, it was worth it. That's what you call the bridle. Yep. There's our bridle. <laughs> Might not be nothing with them in the front. Might not. One <laughs> buffalo. Just quick run. Yeah. yeah. See when they get in the front of it, messes it up. Big old buffalo. But you wanted a buffalo, didn't you? Yeah. We got it. Big old buffalo. Quit. Quit, 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 quit. <laughs> All right, y'all. He is sinking that last net. Bradley, what's the, what's the front of that net called? You talking about the bridle or? Like the, I guess the throat that they, the sw the fish well, you swim got through. Two throats. You got a okay. front. Your front throat is just kind of a guide. Okay. And then the second one is a catch throat or flu. So okay. Either be a flu or throat. 
Either one of them terms would be right. Gotcha. The buffalo didn't run today. The buffalo didn't run. We got one no, big one. We got one big one. Were they all that size the other day? A lot of them smaller. That's about as big as what we've been catching right there. I got you. Knock him out first. All right, y'all, we're back here at Bradley's house. And uh, he asked if I wanted any fish. Well, I've already eaten all, I've already eaten blue cat, but I've never eaten a buffalo. So I'm gonna do a catch and cook of that. And uh, I'm gonna cook it just like he did, almost just like he did on one of his videos and uh, see how it tastes. I'm kind of excited to try a buffalo for the first time. Hey, I appreciate you cleaning that buffalo for me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, if you want to know how to clean a buffalo, he's got some detailed videos on his channel on how to clean buffalo. Yep. He's got some on there on how to clean an op. Uh, if you don't know, cleaning ops are a lot different than cleaning a, a channel or a blue. Uh, he's got some of that on there. He's got a lot of a lot of fishing content on there. So y'all go on his channel and check that out. If you want to know how to clean a buffalo, I'm not going to do the cleaning part on this on this segment. So go to his channel to see how to clean a buffalo. All right, y'all, so he's got that buffalo process down. That right there is boneless fillets. Those are the ribs. Yep. And then we have the steaks over here that we're gonna cook down into fish patties. Bony part. The bony part. All right, y'all, as promised, like I said, I'm gonna cook buffalo patties for y'all. Here's my buffalo meat. Uh, Bradley cleaned his buffalo for me. He's a master at cleaning these, but these fillets are full of tiny bones. But I got this recipe from God's Country Hunting Fishing Channel, so I cannot take credit for this. I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but the concept's still the same. We're gonna cook the fillets in a pressure cooker for about two hours that way, the little tiny bones inside these fillets will pretty much disintegrate. If you ever made salmon patties and you open up the can and you look inside of it, you'll see a bunch of tiny bones, but you can just, they're so brittle, you can pinch them with your fingers. So the cooking them in the pressure cooker is gonna totally pretty much disseminate, I guess you would say, the bones in this buffalo meat, and then we're gonna make buffalo patties. Y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's my Instapot. There's my fish fillets. That is just one buffalo, and I've got a little bit of crawfish boil. I'm just gonna put a, a little tiny bit of that in there, not much. We're gonna set the timer for two hours. Put my lid on, lock it in place. Do the little steamer in the back, make sure it's closed. Pressure cook, uh, two hours. All right, here we go. See y'all in two hours. All right, y'all, so our buffalo fish is cooked down. Here it is right there. Let's go ahead and cook it. All right, so if you didn't know, buffalo fillets are full of little bones. You can see them right here. But if you cook this fish long enough, they pretty much just disintegrate and turn into, like, they turn into nothing. So. That's why you need to cook them for two hours. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and add our ingredients. I'm gonna put some ground cumin in there. Cajun seasoning. Paprika. One egg. This is gonna help hold that fish together. <clears throat> Um, you can either use crushed crackers, uh, cooked bread in the oven, but I have some bread crumbs. This is also going to help hold the fish together. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. This is bread crumbs, like I said. Cheddar cheese. And a little bit of Lafitte's Gourmet Cajun Candied Jalapeno Relish. 
Now let's mix all that together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start getting the skillet hot. We don't need it too terribly hot, probably medium to high heat. Now I'm gonna put uh, about two tablespoons of butter in my skillet. Then I'm gonna patty out my fish patties just like you would hamburgers. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, let's hold them together nice. There we go. That's what we want right there. I don't like them too, too thick. That's nice. Old trash fish, buffalo. My pan's getting hot right now. Then all we want to do is pretty much sear them on each side good till they're a nice golden brown. And then we'll be eating. I'm going to eat all of this too. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and flip them. I may have cooked them a little bit too long. Man. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on that side and we'll be eating shortly. All right, y'all, these are done. Let's go ahead and plate them up. That's a lot of, let's eat. Here we go, I got my little taste tester here. We got our buffalo patties. You like ketchup, don't you? She's gonna put ketchup on hers. Let me get you a little bite here. You ready? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna open that ketchup one. She likes ketchup on everything. On my eggs? Here, come on. On everything. Get you a little bite. Ow. Get back in the video. Come here. You can't leave. All right, y'all, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use tartar sauce on mine. hot a little bit is it good yeah. here we go first time i've ever had buffalo patties i've had fish patties before Let's see how they compare no <laughs> pretty good pretty good for an old trash fish all right let's quit hey they're good they just are. You want another bite? No. Mm -hmm. You want another bite? No. Here. There you go. All right, y'all. That's going to wrap up today's video. Bradley, I appreciate you taking me out. You and Danielle. And uh, I hope that y'all will subscribe to the channel before you leave. Hit that like button and the notification bell. That way you will get notified every time I post a video and make sure you watch them all. So y'all have a great day. God bless. I'm fixing to eat all these buffalo patties by myself. Unless no, you're not. Unless you want some more. So y'all have a great day. God bless. And we'll catch y'all on the next episode. He's stuck like Chuck yeah. now. Jared, that thing heavy? I think 60. You deal with weights a lot. You pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Come on, CrossFit. Let's go. Number one. That number one. That number one. Wow. That'll keep, bro. I mean a big one. Let me get that net over, don't we? I mean a big one. There we go.